A uh, very good afternoon, dear students. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. 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 Good afternoon. Hope all are doing good. Good afternoon, sir. Keeping safe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so I'll just to brief you about what is that we are going to do for the next uh, uh, two hours or so. Okay, so first one is I'll just uh, uh, give a little bit of introduction about uh, the scales and the questioner. Okay, uh, I'll also demonstrate the possible tools that we can use. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, if you have any queries towards the last, now when we are finishing one one two, you can just ask me the questions if you have. Uh, we will try to solve uh, there itself. Okay, uh, if you want any customized help, we will do at the end. Okay, so probably uh, uh, throughout the session, I'll be covering most of your primary data uh, analysis as such. Okay, so what is uh, uh, the plan related to analysis? Is, uh, we will do uh, uh, the uh, no the test which uh, is directly related to our project alone. Okay, we are not going to explore uh, in depth. Okay, so this since it is required for your uh, project uh, requirement. So we'll focus towards that. Okay, so towards the end might be uh, we will customize according to your needs. Okay, so what are the tools that we will probably look into us? Uh, we will have uh, uh, one sample uh, t-test that we will work on. Uh, we'll do uh, ANOVA, uh, chi-square, correlation, regression. Uh, the next the next level of multivariate analysis is uh, you know, uh, factor analysis and cluster. Okay, so uh, we will proceed with that. Uh, if you have any queries then and there, uh, then uh, we will uh, <coughs> sort out there itself. So this is the plan. Okay. Um, I just uh, write what are the variables type. So we have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, variables. Uh, just a minute. So this, uh, uh, so when you look onto the variables as such, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So all are, uh, no, uh, all are, uh, usage of tools is uh, now completely related uh, to the variables that we use okay uh, so there are two kinds of variables one uh, we call it as uh, uh, metric okay uh, metric variables uh, the next one is what we call it as uh, categorical variables Categorical uh, variables. Okay. So the first one is we need to identify what is meant by metric variable and what is meant by categorical variable. So when you move on to this metric variable as such, uh, whenever we measure, okay, whenever we measure any variable using a Likert scale, okay, uh, using a uh, Likert. Hope you know what is meant by a Likert scale. So whenever you have uh, any variables, uh, okay, any variable that is measured using a Likert scale with minimum of Five points. Okay, but it should be minimum of five points. A proper uh, Likert scale with minimum of five rating points. Okay, so it can start from a strongly active to a strongly disagree. Okay, where I will have a neutral scale. So it means that we have equal number of uh, positives and equal number of negatives. So when we have equal number of positives and when we have equal number of uh, negatives and minimum of five points then I can consider that as a metric variable because this comes under interval scale. Okay, so it's anything that is measured with an interval scale or with a ratio scale, we call that as a metric variable. Okay, so this one I need to have a solid understanding. So you should be able to identify uh, from your questioner uh, what are the metric variables that you are using. Okay, it is not only uh, that using a Likert scale, if you get something directly from uh, 
uh, the uh, you know, data uh, directly a uh, numeric data. I could say uh, directly from a numeric data. Numeric data meant consider uh, you have an option called as an age. Okay. So uh, age example you see age. Okay. And you are trying, uh, you are asking to, uh, you are asking for the respondent to respond to that particular age. Consider you are just giving a dash. Where they are feeling the numbers. Consider that uh, they are 45. They are feeling it as 45. Or whatever age they are feeling it, then that is also called as a metric. Okay, that is also called as a metric. Consider you are measuring the age through a category or a uh, no, group, a category or a group. What is this category or a group? Is, you know, consider that you are doing like this 18 to uh, 25, uh, 26 to uh, 50. I am just giving you an example. That's it. So, okay, like that. Consider that you are measuring the age using. Uh, groups like this, then it becomes categorical. Then it becomes categorical. So this is uh, how it goes. Okay. So you need to have an understanding on what is metric. So I'm just uh, discussing metric only based on your requirement for the project. Okay. So there will be uh, two kinds where you can measure uh, whether uh, it is metric or not. One is through uh, the uh, questionnaire where you are using a Likert scale minimum of five points. It can be more than five point of a Likert scale, but the minimum requirement is only five points. If it is more than five, then it comes under metric. Consider that you have used Likert scale. Consider that you have used Likert scale, where the scale is only three points. Okay. Consider that there is a Likert scale where there is only three points, three point scale. Then it automatically becomes a category. Okay, so from your questionnaire, if you have a questionnaire in your hand, you can just open your laptop and check. Okay, whether uh, it is uh, whether what are the questions that comes under metric, what are the questions that comes under category. Okay. So this categorical variables are usually measured in groups like this. Okay, uh, groups like this. Example, take a uh, consider you want to know like you know uh, the frequency of shopping. Okay, frequency of shopping. You say that it is uh, daily, monthly, weekly. Now, this is this are all a categorical. Okay, this is all uh, categorical labels. Consider that you are asking in numbers. So, how many times you purchase per month? Okay, you are asking like uh, twice, uh, thrice. No, if it is in a solid number, if it is in a solid number, okay, then it becomes a metric. Is that clear? Right. So, you need to understand this two basic things. One is metric variable, and another one is a categorical variable. Okay. So whether you'll be able to identify with your uh, questionnaire, whether you'll be able to identify what are the questions that uh, that is metric and what are the questions that are all categorical. Now, uh, any any doubts on this uh, categorical and uh, metric? Any doubts? No, sir. Do you have any doubts? Yes. No, no sir. sir. No, it's clear. No, sir. Shall we proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when uh, when you are very uh, you know, when you are able to identify what are your what are the variables you now what are the questions that are uh, metric variable and what are the variables that have uh, categorical then it is easy for us to go further. So the first one is uh, as I told you we will uh, we will have a set of tools which we will be using it. Uh, like I am just uh, orienting towards analysis uh, completely you now orienting towards a project requirement. Okay, so keep that uh, in your mind. Okay, so the first uh, one that we'll be looking uh, to is independent sample t test. Okay, so independent sample. So this is one test which uh, uh, we can uh, use. Okay, in your for your projects. Okay. So what is the requirement for applying uh, independent sample t test? Is I'm just going straight. I'm not going to discuss uh, no, uh, about uh, the properties, you know, the assumptions and other things. I'm just straight going for your, uh, which would be applicable for your analysis. Okay. So when you move on to this, so the requirement is two variables. Okay. For uh, for uh, now for applying uh, independent sample t test, we require. Uh, <coughs> Uh, two variables, okay. So one should be metric, one variable should be metric, and another variable should be category. Okay, another one should be category, another one should be category. Okay, so when you want to this category again, you should have only two. I mean, 
right? And just uh, relating to your question, that it should have only two options. Okay, so you you should have only two options. You should have only two options. Then only I can apply independent sample t-test. Okay, so when you have categorical uh, uh, variable with only two options, we call that as dichotomous. We call it as dichotomous. We call it as dichotomous variable. Okay, so for applying an independent sample t-test, I require a metric variable. I require a categorical variable. This categorical variable will have it should have only two options. Should have only two options. So you should uh, keep this in your mind. You should keep this in your mind. Okay. So what for it is used? What for it is used? Man. So consider that. Consider uh, probably uh, the variable, the uh, dichotomous variable, where you might have used this. I tell you, uh, there are certain uh, cases where you might have used yes, no. Okay. There are certain cases uh, where. Uh, uh, you might have asked related to yes, no. Uh, sometimes uh, gender with only two options like male and female. Okay. Some uh, some uh, 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 some part of your question is like uh, gender where you have only two options. Consider that. Now, uh, what about the question that you have two options? You know, where I can apply this. Okay. This is uh, example of a categorical scale. Consider that matrix. Okay, uh, consider it as metric scale. Uh, you have measured, you know, uh, consider you have measured customer satisfaction example. Okay, you have measured uh, customer satisfaction. Consider you have uh, measured customer satisfaction. Okay, so when you have used customer satisfaction and you have used a Likert scale, uh, okay, example, a Likert scale you have used. Okay, I'm just assuming uh, you have used a uh, Likert scale. Okay, so this Likert scale. Uh, 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 the uh, the the scale that I, I have used is uh, strongly the consider and put it like this. Uh, uh, I mean to say, uh, highly dissatisfied. Okay, dissatisfied. Okay, so neither satisfied or not uh, dissatisfied. That's a neutral scale. Uh, you have uh, satisfied and uh, highly satisfied. Okay, so consider that I am using a uh, Likert scale, a uh, uh, five point, a uh, uh, five point Likert scale, where I am just trying to measure customer satisfaction. Okay, I am using a customer satisfaction. So this is purely a metric variable. This is purely a metric variable. Okay. So what is the application of uh, independent sample test here? Is consider that I can measure whether on the satisfaction level whether the uh, uh, customer satisfaction, whether the customer satisfaction uh, differs uh, between male and female. Okay, so for that purpose, I can use independent sample t test. So, what statistically it does is uh, now it just verifies the sample mean of male, whether the sample mean of male and the sample mean of female are one and the same or not. That is the application of independent sample. This is one test that you can probably use uh, uh, in your projects. Okay, right? So what, what is the purpose? I'm just trying to find whether uh, the opinion related, whether the opinion related to uh, no, uh, the customer satisfaction, whether it differs between uh, male and female. Okay, so for that purpose, I can use. Uh, this one. Uh, for the same, consider that you have used uh, some medical measures or employee satisfaction in that case. Now, there also you can uh, probably uh, use this uh, independent sample. Okay. You got it? So, uh, let me repeat once again for those uh, who have missed in between. Okay. So, uh, we can, one possible uh, tool that we can use for our project is independent sample. So what all I am going to use this independent sample t-test is we are just trying to compare the sample means. We are just trying to compare the sample means. Okay. So the requirement of the independent sample t-test is two variables. Okay. You need to have two variables. This uh, one variable should be metric and another one variable should be categorical. In that categorical should have only two options. You should have only two options. I mean to say, there are only two categories. There are only two categories in it. Okay, there are only two categories in it. Okay, so then if I have uh, a condition like this and uh, you know, comparison of uh, such variables uh, makes sense, it is 
related to my objective of my study or uh, which I want to explore in my research, then I can use it. Okay, right? So, for example, uh, consider that my question has a uh, dichotomous label like this male and female, and uh, uh, my question is you know, uh, my project is related to customer satisfaction. If I want to measure, if I want to measure uh, whether there is a significant difference between male and female related to customer satisfaction, then I can apply this independent sample test. Okay, is that clear? Any doubts here? Any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can just let me know the application of independent sample test. The next one which I would like to tell you is, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep that in your mind, keep that in your mind. It is not just because uh, I have uh, the variables and the settings like this, I can apply independent sample test. No. How I should choose a tool is, if whether the finding after applying this uh, tool, I get some inference or findings, whether that finding is related to my objective, whether if it is related to my uh, you know, uh, topic, then what I can use such kind of tool. It is not uh, that I, know I need to use uh, two, uh, uh, two chi square tests, one ANOVA or one independent sample test. No, it is basically it should fulfill your requirement. Okay, requirement means the finding of any such application of tool should have answered my question. My question is my objective. Okay, right? So that is the application of independent sample. Okay, any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? Any any clarification is that anybody uh, need? Uh, so here, male and female options are only two, right? If at all we yes. consider, hello. Yes, yes. Uh, if we consider a uh, third option like uh, other gender, will it be considered as? I don't know. You cannot use it. Here. Okay, sir. You cannot. Use. So you should strictly have only two options. You should have okay. only two options. Then we can drive. I have just told like an example of gender where I have used only two options, where it is male and female alone. Okay, if you have the third gender, you cannot use uh, independent sample test. Okay, any other doubts? Uh, is that anybody sure. examining? Sure. <laughs> yes, sir, how we will interpret the output of this independent sample t-test, sir? First orientation, next to the Okay. Okay. So what I do. Right, so this is uh, a project uh, where, as I already told you, like no, um, we have uh, uh, gender. Okay, we have uh, gender here. So when I'm looking onto the values, you know, uh, I'm not dealing anything with uh, uh, the entry and other things. Hope we must have done it, and you also know it. Okay, so here uh, in the gender of the respondents, I have two options. Okay, I have two options here. Uh, so what is it like uh, zero is declared as male and one is declared as female. I can say that Pakka it is a uh, dichotomous variable because only two options are there. Okay, right. So this variable I'm taking just for the purpose of uh, solving it. And another vari variable which I would like to uh, no, uh, take is, um, I'll take uh, one variable. Okay. So let me uh, check. So le uh, let me uh, take uh, this uh, example, which is uh, uh, related to quality. Okay. So this is something related to the quality. Okay. So when you look onto this, uh, no, it is measured in a Likert scale. It is measured in a Likert scale. Okay. Where I have strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, and this. So this is a Pakka Likert scale. I mean to say, uh, you have uh, both. Uh, uh, positives, equal number of positives, equal number of negatives, and uh, you also have a neutral scale. Uh, so this is a Pakka metric uh, variable. So uh, what are the variables I'm taking? I'm just taking uh, category variable. Okay. So as as uh, uh, things are there. Uh, okay. So when you look onto that, you have the option here is uh, you have you should have. Uh, one category variable and another metric variable. So metric variable, I'm just taking. What is that I'm taking? I'm taking uh, quality as a metric variable, and you have a dichotomous variable which is gender. Okay, which is gender as uh, you see in the board. Okay, All right. So here uh, I will just demonstrate you how to work on 
you I hope you must have already experienced because you already uh, done uh, this thing. So you go to analyze, uh, go to compare means, go to analyze, go to compare means, uh, go to independent sample t test. Okay, independent sample t test. So <coughs> here it opens. Uh, so here what I am uh, doing is so the grouping variable is so you have a test variable and a grouping variable. A testing variable and a grouping variable is there. Okay, so when you have this uh, grouping variable, I put here in the grouping variable. So grouping variable, I need to define the groups. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, I'll click on uh, define uh, group. I'll put it as zero because I have declared zero as male and one as female. It depends on your uh, declaration of values. Consider that you have declared one and two, you put it as one and two. Consider that you have put the zero on one, you put zero on one. So based on the declaration that you have made in your uh, SPSS, okay. So make sure that you define the group uh, uh, zero is one group and two is uh, one is uh, group two. Uh, I have because I have declared zero as male and one as female. So that is the reason. That is the reason uh, why I am just uh, uh, declaring like this. Okay. So I am just putting it as uh, continue. Okay. Uh, the next one is I need to put the test variable. So the test variable is the quality, okay, which I already told you. Quality. Okay, so the quality is the test variable which is measured in a uh, Likert scale. Okay, measured in a Likert scale. So I go there. So option I'm not doing anything here. Bootstrapping also I'm not doing anything here. Okay, I'm just uh, just putting. Okay, right. So I just uh, share the uh, output screen. Okay, we just look onto the output screen now. And just look onto the output screen. So when you look onto the output uh, output screen here, and when you look onto the output uh, uh, screen here, um, uh, when you look onto the output uh, uh, when you look onto the output uh, screen here. Um, you have uh, two tables will be there which you need to document as well in your uh, you know uh, as well in your um, uh, project reports so the first one is group statistics uh, uh, the second one is an independent sample detest so what you do is uh, you you will have to write interpretation related to this how will you write interpretation here is uh, you have a male and female okay so you have mean and uh, mean is there standard deviation is there standard error is there you can just write about the mean, how many are there as male, uh, how many are there as female. You can write something on the mean, okay, uh, mean and standard deviation, okay, right. So this is one thing, the, the first table. The second table you should uh, look on to here, okay. So here you have uh, two options here. So uh, what the first one that you need to look on to is uh, the significance. Uh, the significance value here is, the significance value here is uh, 0 0.001. Okay, so keep this in your mind. Uh, whenever we are uh, doing any testing, it is for 95% significance level. I mean, 95% uh, confidence level. It means that it is 5% level of significance. It is always like that. Uh, we assume we don't go for you no know, 2% uh, or 1% level of significance because we are in uh, social science research. The perception keeps on changing, so we need to allow some kind of type on error more. Okay, so that's the reason that uh, we always choose a 5% level of uh, significance. 5% level of significance meant that I'm allowing 5% type 1 error. <clears throat> okay, I hope you must be knowing what is meant by type 1 error. So when you look on to this uh, significance level, so when you look on to the significance level, it is significant. Uh, how I say it is significant, it is very much less than 0 0.05. Where, what is this 0 0.05? It is 5% level of significance. I'm testing it. Uh, for five percent level of significance, so it is uh, significant. Okay, if if it is significant, okay, if it is significant, what does it mean? Uh, that uh, no, um, if it is significant, it means that uh, uh, you know, the variations are different. It, it means that if you you say that uh, no, uh, always uh, you have a null hypothesis. Always we say there is no significant difference. It means that. No, all the things are equal. Okay, that is how we define null hypothesis. No significant difference. No significant difference meant all are same. That is how uh, it goes. Okay, 
right so here what uh, what what does this mean is the first uh, uh, level of significance says uh, that there is a significant difference okay there is a significant difference okay then what i should do is then what i should do is i should check this value equal variance not assumed uh, if uh, if you look on to uh, this one so okay so when you look on to that if it is not significant if it is not significant then you should look on to this parallel row and check the significant value clear if it is significant then i should go here with equal variance not assumed then you look on to the significant value which is 0.03 Okay, so that is uh, how you need to check in with your independent sample t test. Okay, so if it is significant, okay, then you go here. If it is not significant, then you go with the first uh, significance. Okay, so here when you look on to since it is uh, since this f value, uh, I mean uh, Levinson's test of equity of variance says it is significant. It means that the variance are not equal. Then I will go with that equal variance not assumed. equal variance not assumed you take this significant value and take a decision whether you are going to reject or accept your null hypothesis okay consider that your uh, levings test of equity here in this case it is significant consider that it is not significant it is not significant then you should assume this value only equal variance assumed then you go straight here and check 0.028 will be your significant value it depends on your data that you have in this particular case in this particular case here it is significant so i'll go with this equal variance not assumed and go with this i uh, think it is 0.030 uh, okay so i can say that this is also significant at 5% level if it is significant what is my interpretation my interpretation is there is a opinion difference there is a opinion difference related to quality between male and female respondents that is my inference okay that is my inference okay so let me repeat once more okay so two tables are there how i'll write interpretation the first one you write uh, interpretation related to group statistics you write that this many people are there as male and female right on the uh, mean uh, standard deviation standard error you just give only the figures and say where it is high where it is low that could be the interpretation of the first table the second table what you should write is you 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 check the significance value here you say that the levings test of equity of variance is significant so we are considering equal variance not assumed so we are considering equal variance or not assumed and you say that it is found that t test of equity means this significant which means which means that the opinion related to quality related to the quality between male and female are different okay so this is how you need to write the inference okay so you have uh, simply uh, copied okay you have simply uh, uh, copied the table from the sbss output and you have pasted it so the next thing is uh, the alignment portion how you are going to do it i'll just demonstrate you with only one table uh, later on you can proceed okay so what you do is uh, when you move on the cursor here you yeah, know you need to choose a entire table okay you need to choose a entire table uh, go to the border table border and put all borders okay you go to table border and put all borders first one the next one is you will have to go to the uh, font font we always use times new roman so i have just changed it to times new roman the next one is the required font size is 12 always the required font font is uh, uh, 12 okay 12 is a default size okay right this is what the next one what i need to do is i need to take this out the group statistics i'm taking it out and pasting it outside okay i'm pasting it outside and what i need to do is this table is empty so i'll be deleting that row as well i'll be deleting the row as well the next one is um, the next one is you, uh, when you when you move your cursor towards the end of the table 
uh, no, you can just simply drag a bit. You can simply drag a bit. Choose uh, the entire content inside. Choose the entire content inside. Uh, go to layout. Go to layout and choose an option like this. Okay, and make sure that all the numbers are centered. Okay, all the numbers are centered and all the words are like this. Okay, so if you want, you can bold this one or leave this one. The next one is group statistics. It should have some uh, table number. So I will put it like this. Put it as like, like this T A B L E. Uh, and uh, uh, what is the chapter number of data analysis? I mean, analysis chapter? Four. Four. Four, sir. Four. Four point. Consider that in that particular chapter, it is 11th table. I'm, I'm just giving an example. So I'll put it as 11 here. And this I'll put here and choose the center. Okay. And make sure that, make sure that inside the table, inside the table, make sure that the spacing is single inside the table. Make sure that the spacing is single and before and after it is zero and click OK. OK, so this is what is the required format in your documentation. OK, which is, which is the required format? This is the required format. OK, so make sure that you don't simply copy and paste like this. OK, so this is your output that you get from it. So how we have done this. So this is how your documentation should be. This is how your documentation should be. Clear? So the next one is what we are going to see is a uh, price player. So as you all know, this uh, uh, price per test is uh, uh, both uh, a parametric and a non-parametric. Okay, so it is both a parametric as well as a, 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 a non-parametric uh, tool. <laughs> so what is the requirement here for applying a price per test? Uh, you need to have two categories. Okay, you need to have two categorical variables and uh, like you know, you'll have a lot of uh, categorical variables in your uh, uh, question okay so we consider that there are uh, machines related to uh, uh, frequency of shopping and then brand preference so many brands will be there and what is a uh, uh, preference towards it okay so uh, practically i'll tell you what this uh, application area here we are just trying to find whether uh, the variables are associated or not. That's it. What is this associated or not? I just uh, tell you now. Uh, consider that uh, you have an age group, for example. Okay, you have age group. Okay, so you have age group. So consider my uh, age group, which I have considered is 22, 25 is one group. Okay, 22, 25 is one group. 26 to 30 is one group. 31 to 40 is another group, and there is one more group called as above 40. And just for an example, I'm giving you. So there is no restriction on the minimum number of options or more number of options whenever you use a chi square test. Okay, so that is not the you may not have to worry about it. And so that this is that this is one categorical variable. And so that is one categorical variable. Okay. The another categorical variable let me consider uh, frequency of shuffling. Okay. Frequency of shopping. This one more variable, uh, which is uh, frequency of uh, shopping. So when you look on to this uh, frequency of shopping as such, okay. Uh, so here I have a few options. Okay? I have a few options. Uh, like uh, I say, like uh, daily is one option. Okay. Uh, I say during the weekends. Okay. Or I say this fortnightly. Uh, or uh, something like that. Okay. So I have uh, first option daily, second option weekly, third option is uh, fortnightly, and the fourth one is monthly. Okay. 
Until then, I have four. So this is uh, category and variable two. Okay, this is category and variable two. So when you want to do this, okay, uh, what is how I can apply a chi square is? So the preliminary condition is two categorical variable. Yes, I have two categorical variable. This is first categorical variable, and this is second categorical. Variable. I'm just trying to find whether there is an association of these age group with their frequency of shopping. That is my idea here. Okay, so uh, association meant practically which uh, is that a particular group is associated with particular group here. So uh, layman concept, what we are trying to do is uh, which uh, is that these options have any association with any of these options here. Whether any option here is attached to any options. Let's say for an example, uh, consider that like 22 to 23 years of age, uh, they go daily for a shopping. 26 to 30, they go for an evening or they go for a monthly. So I'm just trying to find is that any group is associated with any of this group here. Only association can be found out by using this chi square test. By using this chi square test. Okay. The, what is the limitation of chi square here is this chi square will not tell you, will not tell you which group here, which group here is associated with which group here. Okay. It will tell you that some group here is associated with some group there. That is what is association meant, what the chi square can tell you. But it cannot tell you which option here is associated with which option here. Here, that for that I need to use an analysis called as correspondence analysis. Okay, I need to use an analysis called as a correspondence analysis. So when I use an analysis called as correspondence analysis, this analysis will tell you will tell you which group here is associated with which group here. Okay, then I can use this correspondence analysis. But chi square will tell you only, the chi square will tell only whether any of these group is associated with any of these group. That is what a chi square can tell. Uh, is that clear? Any doubts? Application of chi square? Uh, so when you uh, look on to this, uh, we have age group, uh, which is very well a categorical scale. Income is a very well categorical uh, scale. Uh, current status is also a categorical scale. Okay. So uh, statistically, statistically, uh, I can apply a chi-square between age group and income level. Age group and an income level, I can apply. But whether it is going to serve the purpose, I need to think on that. Consider that you are talking about uh, some uh, uh, employment level of your, uh, if your research is related to employment level, okay, or if it is uh, related to the employment status of particular people or their earning status, then uh, and applying a chi square between this age and income group will definitely serve the purpose, okay, will definitely serve the purpose. But here our project is dealing with marketing, which deals with customer satisfaction, okay. Though I can apply a chi-square, the finding of that chi-square is not going to help me in anything. Okay, because that is of no use. So I, uh, it is based that I use a chi-square here. Okay, so based on the project, based on my objective, I need to choose variables. Okay, right. So again, uh, no comparing age and income it doesn't make it, does, it is not going to give me any sense or consider that I'm comparing age and current employment status, it is not going to say, uh, no, give me any sense. Okay, so though there are two categories, that is of no use. Okay, consider this is there, okay. Which brand of chocolate do you prefer? Okay, so this uh, this makes sense, you know, compare taking this question makes sense because it is related to the brand preference. Okay, so what I will do is I can very well compare uh, that age and the brand preference that makes sense because my project is related to customer satisfaction and marketing so it, it, it very well makes a sense okay so whether a, a age is associated with our brand preference okay whether the income level uh, changes with the brand preference whether my current employee status 
change with the brand preference then i can do lot of chi squares here because the comparison is between the brand and the other demographics so it makes me a sense because it is a marketing logic because it is related to the customer satisfaction okay right so consider the same thing as consider you are doing a uh, no a, a common social science project okay where you are just trying to uh, no uplift uh, uh the society then comparing age and income definitely makes a sense age and full time status employment status make a sense then the do in that project i can apply a price square not here which is related to marketing as well so let me share <clears throat> right so when you look on to this uh, so i'm i'm just choosing uh, uh, no uh, the age group uh, this is very well a category scale where i have all these options are there okay so all uh, measured in uh, categories and the next one is related uh, to i told you the brand preference which brand uh, do you prefer uh, we have uh, many brands here cadbury nestle mars hershey's and others are there so it it will definitely make a sense if i apply a chi square here okay so how i am going to apply is chi square there are two ways uh, one is i'll uh, just show you one way you can just explore the other way you can go to <coughs> cross tabs okay you can go grow, uh, go to uh, cross tabs uh, now what is that age is one and another one is brand preference so i'm putting in row one thing and putting in the other thing now uh, in the column okay uh here i need not have to do because i'm not going to do any kind of iterations there in the cross tab uh in the cross tab statistics i need to just check in this box uh, chi square box other things are not needed okay uh, that is fine cell if you want uh, expected you can put expected else it is not needed okay for if you want to explore more also you can explore more okay right <clears throat> for that purpose you can just look on to that else it is not needed Uh, okay everything most strapping i am not going to do so when i click this when i click this i'll get the output like this okay so output um for uh, for a chi square it is uh, uh, better that you put a cross tabulation and a chi square test or if you are you uh, know um Yeah, if you want only the chi square table and just look on to whether the values okay or not you can just put only the chi square that is fine else uh, else you can put this uh, cross tabulation uh, age and brand preference cross tabulation you can put and uh, chi square test okay so uh, related to the interpretation here you can just uh, below this cross tabulation you can write lot of uh, uh, interpretations related to which age group where it is uh, where the observed count is more where it is very less all these things you can write here in the cross tabulation in the chi square test you need to look on to pearson chi square you need to look on to pearson chi square we are not worried about the value i mean the chi square value or the degrees of freedom here Uh, we are much worried about only the significant value the p value the critical value okay so here when you look on to that it says it is significant okay significant means we are rejecting the null hypothesis the null hypothesis for a chi square test is there is no association between variables okay you should uh, keep that in your mind you should not use no significant difference you should not use no significant relationship all those words should not be used in chi square only for chi square we use a word called association keep that in your mind you should use only association okay association you should use so default null hypothesis is there is no association between variables in this case the null hypothesis is there is no association between age and their brand preference that's it so that is the null hypothesis here so here the result is significant you can just look on to the value here uh, the asymptotic uh, significant value the significant value was significant it means that there is an association between age and brand preference so it clearly shows you that different age group people like different brands of chocolate okay so that is the inference here okay so here we are we are not just going to look on to this you uh, know uh likelihood ratio or linear by association all those things we are not going to use we are just uh, looking only on the pearson chi square 
and just look on to the p value and take a decision whether we are going to accept or reject the null hypothesis The next one is analysis of variance. So uh, the, the next one is the analysis of uh, uh, variance. So when you look on to this, uh, uh, it has two variables. Okay, it has two variables. One is categorical. One is categorical variable, and another one is the matrix. Another one in the so when you look on to categorical variable, here you should have more than two options. That is the only condition. You have more than two options. Okay, you should have more than two. Okay, what is this more than two is? Um, uh, for if it is uh, now uh, uh, equal to two, if it is uh, equal to two, what happens is it becomes an independent sample. Happens as a independent sample variance. Okay, so uh, the condition is uh, two variables. One is categorical, so categorical should have more than two options. Categorical should have more than two options, and you should have a metric. You should have a metric variable. Okay, so let me consider the uh, categorical variable. Take the example uh, the age group. Okay, the age group. Okay, the age group is there. So uh, let's consider the age group 22, 25, 26 to 30, and 30 to 35, more than 30, above 30. Okay, this is just for an example. Okay, so we have so many so many age groups are there. So many age groups are there. Okay. The next one is metric variable. I just to consider that as a customer size. Okay. I'm using the same variable so that you can understand. Okay. Customer uh, satisfaction. So I have uh, customer satisfaction. So uh, consider that I'm, I'm uh, measuring customer satisfaction uh, using a Likert scale, which is high, uh, highly dissatisfied, uh, dissatisfied, neutral. Satisfied, highly satisfied. Okay, highly uh, satisfied. So consider that this is what is my uh, variable. Okay, and the age group is a categorical variable. I have more. Okay, I have more. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, what is uh, what's the application of an over here is I'm just trying to find uh, consider that this age group is there. Okay, they have some satisfaction. This is here to say there is some satisfaction. Here there is some satisfaction. Here there is satisfaction. What I am trying to find here is whether the satisfaction level is same across all the groups, whether it is same across all the groups or it differs. Whether there is a difference in the customer satisfaction related to age group. Or it is say across across the same across all the age group whether the satisfaction is same. That is what I can find. Okay. Again, again here in ANOVA will not uh, tell you will not tell you which group is more satisfied, which group is less satisfied. That ANOVA cannot tell. You. That ANOVA cannot tell. You. What ANOVA can tell you is whether the opinion. Uh, related to customer satisfaction differs in each group or it is same across different that is what this ANOVA can tell you okay what is the limitation of ANOVA is ANOVA cannot tell you which group if if they if the satisfaction level differs if the satisfaction level differs uh, it will not tell you which group has more satisfaction, which group is less satisfaction. This is because ANOVA clearly tells you, yes, there is a difference in the customer satisfaction. But it cannot tell you which group is more satisfied or which group is less satisfied. 
that is the limitation of one over said no i want to explore more on that then you have many tools like you have done contest okay you have some test called as a done contest okay done contest and there are some other test can try to be called as done uh, test or test is there but which will tell you which will tell you like which group is more satisfied which group is less satisfied okay so this is the application of anova okay any doubts related to this Uh, so uh, statistically for uh, uh, statistically for applying the uh, correlation i need to have two variables both the variables are metric uh, then it is called as a parametric correlation which is called pearson which is called pearson correlation okay so let's look on to this uh, thing so again the next condition is the correlation make sure that you do uh, between one dependent variable and another independent variable it's always better to do that okay so let me consider two variables here um, i have customer satisfaction and i have a product attitude okay so these two variables are there uh, one is customer satisfaction and product attitude both are metric variables here so whether the customer satisfaction has a correlation with the product attribute because when you consider like independent or dependent uh, customer satisfaction is a dependent variable and product attribute is a independent variable okay so you can proceed with that okay you can go with uh, uh, from here also you can do like correlation or you can go to correlate and bivariate there also you can do so uh, correlation bivariate So I'll put both the variables inside. So the variables are uh, customer satisfaction and product attitude. Okay, two things are there. So I am doing only Pearson correlation because both are metric. Then I should make sure that Pearson uh, is checked in. Uh, then I give uh, okay. I'll uh, share the output. So the output comes like this. Okay. So the first one related to the correlation is you, you must be knowing that. Uh, the correlation lies between you uh, know uh, plus one uh, i mean minus one to plus one okay so this is the complete range of correlation coefficient so the first one as i need to determine whether the correlation is significant then only i can determine the degree of relationship then only i can determine the uh, degree of uh, relationship so when you look on to this table as such when you look on to this table as such uh, first one i need to look on to the significant value okay so it says that it is 0.00 it shows it is significant okay it means that there is a relationship there is a significant relationship between two variables so we must be knowing the null hypothesis for a correlation is there is no significant relationship between variables there is no significant relationship between variables is the null hypothesis for correlation okay so here uh, it says it is significant Uh, it says it is significant and i am rejecting the null hypothesis it means that there is a significant relationship between what and what between customer satisfaction and product attribute so there is a uh, it says that there is a significant relationship okay only that i can inter uh, write an inference with this significant level to explore more to explore more what i should do is i should look on to the correlation coefficient that is pearson correlation so when you look on to this pearson correlation you have 0.475 okay that is the correlation coefficient okay so if this is there then you can say that they are positively this since it is point near to 0.5 i can say that this is moderately positively correlated okay so the customer satisfaction and product attitude are positively moderately correlated okay so the first inference what you will write the first inference is related to there is a significant relationship the second inference will be uh, looking on to the correlation coefficient you say that the correlation coefficient between customer satisfaction and product attribute is 0.475 okay which is positively moderately correlated okay that is what i should write so consider in the other way if this significant value is not significant but in this case it is significant but if you get a non significant then you say that 
there is no relationship between customer satisfaction and product attribute there is no relationship at all is that clear so that you should check if you if in your project if you get that it is uh, insignificant okay if it is not significant you are accepting the null hypothesis then you should say that there is no significant relationship between customer satisfaction and product attributes so for a simple linear uh, regression uh, one is dependent another one is independent both the variables are metric so in the data set you know we have uh, the same thing i'll just take uh, take uh, customer satisfaction and product attribute customer satisfaction and product attribute uh, so the simple linear regression equation is y is equal to a plus bx always y is equal to a plus bx always okay so here uh, dependent variable is uh, customer satisfaction independent variable is product attribute okay so this customer satisfaction is a dependent variable the product attribute is a dependent variable so i just demonstrate you how will you uh, do it and write the interpretation go to regression go to linear okay go to regression and go to linear okay so here the dependent variable is customer satisfaction so i'll put uh, customer satisfaction in dependent variable in independent variable i'll put uh, product attribute okay product attribute um, okay so nothing else i'm i'm not doing going to do any plotting and other things you can very well uh, do it because you know it already okay right so i'm just sharing the output screen now so when you look on to this uh, output screen okay so basically for uh, uh, regression make sure that you have three tables okay three tables should be there so what are the three tables so the first table is model summary should be there another table should be there and coefficient table should be there okay so this is more important this is uh, more important that there are three variables here okay so what is the first thing that i need to look uh, on a simple regression is i need to look on to the anova table the first one is i need to look on to the anova table and make sure that it is whether it is significant or not whether the f value is significant or not why it is so uh, significant why is that i am just looking on to the uh, significance level of anova is so anova talks about uh, you know a significant difference okay so consider that the variables that you are using has no difference at all then uh, it is uh, the thing that uh, one variable cannot predict the other so the, the simple thing is we'll say that the model cannot be fit that is the reason that is the reason that uh, like you know we need to check on our table so first one is immediately after you performing uh, a regression first one is you need to check the significant value of anova table okay once it is significant only you can proceed consider that it is not significant you should not use regression because there is no use of using regression later on okay right <clears throat> so when you look on to this uh, table it says it is significant okay so uh, below this anova table you can say that like you no know, uh, the f value is significant it shows that the model can be fit the next one is you need to go into the model summary okay the next one is you need to go into the model summary from the model summary what you are just trying to do is you should check with the r square or adjusted r square okay so this will give you the rate of prediction the percentage of prediction this will give you the percentage of prediction okay so when you look on to this here the r square it is only 22% a uh, point to to six meant it is 22 okay into 100 22% of prediction so when you look on to this model as such 22 prediction uh, when just 22 uh, percent of prediction practically no uh, there is no use of doing it you can uh, just uh, don't document it if the prediction is very much less at least the prediction should be point uh, no at least 60 percent should be there if it is at least 60% then i can go in for a model building or i can write a regression equation but here in this uh, example in this example 
I found that you know the R square is very least. <clears throat> okay, so when it is very least, I can say that the model cannot be. That is the second stage of model fitting. Okay, so consider that you get more than sixty percent. But in this case, in this example, it is not sixty uh, percentage. Practically, I should not proceed with the regression. I I should uh, omit using regression for these two variables. But just for your understanding, but just for your learning. Uh, assume that uh, like the R square is uh, more than sixty percent, okay, more than sixty percent, okay. Then what I need to do is I need to go in for coefficient thing. Next one I need to get into coefficient thing. In the coefficient table, what is the first thing that I will look? The first thing I look is the significant value, the t significant value here, uh, whether it is significant or not, okay. If it is significant, if uh, the constant and uh, Independent variable or significant, then I can start writing the equation. That is what we call it the model building. Consider, consider that if constant is not significant and the independent variable is significant. Okay, if the constant is not significant and the independent variable is significant, then while writing the equation, while writing the equation, what I should do is I should not write the constant value. I should write only the product attribute. I should write only the product attribute. Okay. So consider the other case. Consider the other case. If constant is significant and the independent variable is not significant, what I should do? What I should do? I should not write the equation at all. The model cannot be fit. I cannot use regression here. Is that clear? Right. So the next point is. The next point is. How I will write the equation? How I will write the equation? So here the dependent variable is customer satisfaction is equal to use unstandardized coefficient the beta value. Customer satisfaction is equal to nine point nine eight zero plus one point five eight one product attribute. That is how I need to write the. Uh, I need to uh, write the equation. I'll just uh, type it and show you so that you will understand. Right. So, how will you write the equation as um, customer satisfaction? Is equal to the beta value nine point nine eight zero plus uh, one point five eight one into product attribute. So in your case, you need to check. You need to check like this. Okay. Hope you understood how to write the equation. So which is the final stage? The first one is the first check is ANOVA. The second check is uh, prediction. The first one is ANOVA. Make sure that it is uh, significant. Okay. The first check is that. Okay. Uh, ANOVA is significant. The second check is uh, prediction percentage. Make sure that it is at least uh, more than uh, sixty percent. Then I will go with the coefficient table. Okay, I will go with the coefficient table. Okay, in coefficient table, I should check whether all the variables are significant. Okay, include only those variables which are significant, which is not significant. You you are not supposed to write here since it's a bivariate for the uh, simple linear regression. If the independent variable is not significant, you cannot again fit the model. Okay, but of course, if the constant is not significant, also I can fit the model. But if the independent variable is not uh, significant, I cannot fit the model. Then you can start writing the equation. If both are significant, then I can write. Okay, I can write uh, customer satisfaction is equal to customer satisfaction is equal to nine point nine eight zero plus this. So this is the uh, simple uh, linear regression. This is how I need to uh, get. If you have two variables, make sure that one is dependent and another one is independent. Okay. So here, uh, this constant, this constant, and the product attribute, this constant and the product attribute, 
is what we call it as predictors. Okay, so this predictors predicting the independent variable should be at least more than sixty percent. At least more than sixty percent for the model fit. For the model fit. So when you uh, what is a <coughs> what is the requirement of a multi linear regression so for a multi linear regression i need to have variables all the variables are completely metric okay so you should have one dependent variable and more than one independent variable okay in this case uh, we have uh, customer satisfaction okay uh, uh, customer satisfaction uh, uh dependent variable is there you have independent variables are also there so i'll take this three as independent variable that is product attributes purchase intention and buying motive three things i'll take it as independent variable and customer satisfaction i will take it as dependent variable so how to proceed go to analyze uh go to regression go to linear so in independent variable i'll add few more here purchase intention buying motive okay so three uh, independent variables i'm just using so three independent variables here are uh, product attribute purchase intention and buying motive three things are there dependent variable is customer satisfaction okay so i'm just trying to fit in a uh, multi linear regression so let me share again uh, we will have um, three tables we we'll have uh, three tables so we have model summary um, anova and coefficients okay so when you look on to this okay when you look on to this the first one is uh, anova okay it says it is significant then i can proceed to the next step first one i need to check anova whether anova is significant yes if it is significant then i i need to go into model summary so in model summary i just look on to the r square where it is 44% okay again uh, model is not that much good because we need to have at least 60% okay right so the next part is i need to check with the coefficients so consider that if you get a model like this in your projects just a 44% 30% make sure that you don't use regression okay it, it is a waste like i mean like you know it, it is not going to serve any uh, purpose it is not going to uh, serve any purpose so kindly don't use but make sure that uh, if it is more than 60% then a model could be good so you can proceed with that okay so here uh, let me consider it as more than 60 okay just for a learning purpose uh, here i need to go with the coefficients so when you look onto the coefficients here and you look onto the coefficients here we have all the values are very much significant all the values are very much significant so i have um, constant i have predictor i mean product attribute purchase intention and buying motive so all the things are uh, significant so i'll be including all these variables in the equation how i will write the equation i will write like this so i'll just share it okay. so how i will write the equation you need to go with the coefficient table uh, right so okay so the dependent variable is um customer satisfaction this uh, customer satisfaction customer satisfaction is equal to the constant is 5.636 5.536 okay so just follow me uh 5.0 plus 0.771 one <coughs> 0.771 one product attribute i'm not writing it fully uh plus 0.558 point 0.558 point that is actually 
purchase intention plus 1.420 buying quantity. Okay, so this is how it goes. Uh, this is the multiple linear equation. So how I how I wrote this based on the coefficient table. So in the constant, I have the uh, constant as 5.686. So I have written it as 5.68. Uh, I mean uh, 636 plus uh, product attribute will be 0.771. Okay, so I have put 0.771 into product attribute plus 0.558 uh, purchase intention plus 1.420 uh, buying motive. Okay. So this is how it goes. Consider that you get a negative uh, a negative number here. I need to write the negative number. Consider that uh, in the purchase intention instead of uh, 0.558, if I get minus 0.558, then in the linear regression, I should use only minus here. So that is how um, that is how uh, a multiple linear regression uh, is done. Uh, so we have uh, many variables. What is the purpose here? Is so we are just trying to you know predict gold price uh, using other different variables. You have uh, GDP. You have savings in GDP. You have inflation, real interest rate, GDP per capita, and money supply. So with all these things, I'm just trying to you know, uh, uh, determine gold price. Okay. So how I'll go is I'll go with analyze, uh, regression, linear. So gold price is dependent. Other uh, other things or <coughs> other things are independent. Okay. So. I hope you know how to do uh, regression and not just okay. So I just I'll share the output now. So this is the output. So in the output you have uh, so first one is I look on to I just look on to uh, ANOVA first one is that. I just look on to ANOVA. ANOVA is very much significant. So I can proceed with model fitting, first interpretation. Second one, I'll go with R square. So you see the R square, 99 percentage prediction. The model is very pakka model. Okay, so 99 percent prediction that I need to write. What is this 99 prediction? So this all independent variables plus constant is predicting the gold price to 99.9 percent. .9%. So that is the prediction percentage. The next one, I'll go with the coefficients table. So I need to go with the coefficient table here. So in coefficient table, uh, you need to look on to all the significant values, okay? I need to look on to all the significant value. So when I'm writing the equation, and I'm writing the equation, what, so when there are certain, I see first one uh, value is not significant. So I, I should not include that variable when I'm writing the equation. Example, 0.176 constant value is there. So you cannot include in the equation. Second one is significant. That is GDP in billion, I can include. The next one third, savings in uh, percentage of GDP. It is significant. So I will include that in the equation. The next one, inflation, okay. Inflation is not significant. So I will not use that in the equation. The next one, real interest rate. This real interest rate is not significant. So I will not use that in writing the equation. The next one, you look on to GDP per capita. It is very well significant. So I will include it. The next one, when you look on to money supply, Okay, so in money supply, it is 0.245. If it is 0.245, it is insignificant. I cannot use, I cannot use this variable in writing the equation. Okay, so let us write the equation, how to proceed with writing the equation. Okay, so we will, uh, 
will write the equation now. So how I will write the equation? So uh, the thing is gold price. I'm just determining the gold price. That is a dependent variable is equal to equal to the first one when you look onto the table here. The table constant is not significant, correct? So I cannot include that. The next one is GDP in uh, billion. So it is eleven point six one six into GDP in something is there. So in billions, I'm just putting in the short form. <coughs> okay, uh, plus uh, not plus. It is minus. See here, uh, GDP in billions is eleven point six one six. I put. Uh, here, when you look on to uh, savings, when you look on to savings as such, okay, when you look on to savings, it is uh, minus three hundred and eighty-seven point four nine six uh, into what is that savings? Okay, the next one is inflation. Okay, the next one is inflation. Inflation is also not significant. It is 0.593. I cannot use it. Uh, the next one, real interest rate. It is also not significant. I cannot use. Uh, the next one is 0.00. It is significant, which is GDP per capita. Okay, so I will write as uh, plus 11.8181. Into GDP per capita. Okay, one thing is that, and when you look onto money supply, the last one, money supply, it is also not significant. So how many are significant here? Uh, GDP in billions, uh, savings is uh, significant. Three uh, Next, GDP per capita is significant. So only we have one, two, three variables of significant. Out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there. Out of seven, only three are significant. So in my final model, I'll be writing it as gold price is equal to this equation. So this is how we need to do for a multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression. <clears throat>